you could just give us a brief introduction of yourself, please. Yes. So, um, I'm Johnson Huang. I'm a skull-based ENT surgeon here, based here in Newcastle in Australia. Um, my appointment is to the John Hunter Hospital and John Hunter Children's Hospital. Uh, my subspecialty really is uh, skull-based and otology. However, um, I also uh, perform oncological uh, skull-based neck dissections. Um, as well as uh, appointed as a paediatric uh, otology. How did you learn about piezo surgery? The first time I learned about piezo surgery was in 2015. Uh, it was at an endoscopic ear uh, course, and um, during the live surgery, uh, I believe uh, they were using a piezo uh, to uh, perform the surgery, which I was very impressed um, at how rapidly they were able to expose the middle ear structure, removing the bone while preserving the uh, soft tissues and preserving the nerve. Since then, I've attended a few other courses and attended other conferences and been exposed to the Mectron uh, Piezo, um, where I um, uh, learned about this device and was able to use on cadavers. And um, we, in 2017, we acquired our first unit at a Hunter Valley Private, and um, I've been using it, learning how to adapt it to different types of surgery that I do, including uh, middle ear surgery, stepidectomy, and lateral temporal bone resections. What procedural uses do you have for piezo surgery? The main reason for uh, using piezo is uh, for endoscopic ear cases. Um, traditionally, we would um, use our, uh, a drill, um, but the drill does have its drawbacks. With endoscopic ear surgery, uh, the piezo allows me to expose uh, structures while preserving the corda tympani, preserving uh, the facial nerve, and I find that very, very useful. Uh, since then, I've um, adapted uh, using the piezo in terms of uh, stepidectomy, uh, again exposing the structures I need to expose while um, preserving the curette. I find the piezo very useful because using the traditional curette, often we need um, such fine and controlled force. Um, and you know, in my hands, uh, even though I'm very careful, I st can still um, cause damage to the corda tympani. Um, other procedure that I use piezo for includes uh, lateral temple bone. Um, while I do m most of the dissection with the traditional drill, I find with the piezo I'm able to make the final cuts um, close to vital structure um, and the piezo makes it much safer to do those cuts as well. In addition, you know, I do do uh, maxillectomies and mandibulectomies and that's where the piezo shines in terms of uh, its use. What were you using in these multiple procedures before piezo surgery? Uh, for lateral temple bone, it will be traditional drill with maxillectomy, mandibulectomy. We traditionally will use um, oscillating saw or with, uh, or, or with osteotomes. Um, in terms of uh, uh, stapedectomies, we traditionally use um, the curette, which um, again, even though we can be careful, the corda tympani can be damaged. Um, lastly, with endoscopic ear surgery, uh, traditionally, it will we would, we would have to convert to a microscope to drill um, with a traditional drill or to drill endoscopically, but that takes a long time, creates a lot of bone dust, um, and is quite slow in terms of changing equipment, changing instrument, and irrigating of the field. What made you change to piezo surgery? So the main thing um, is the endoscopic ears. Um, in, in terms of endoscopic ear surgery, the piezo surgery allows me to um, expose the vital structures such as corda and preserving the facial nerve and it basically allows the bone dust to be removed and to create a, a beautiful uh, visible operating field. Um, this allows me to offer my patient uh, minimal uh, invasive surgery for the middle ear while getting the same outcome. Same thing with the uh, stepidectomy with the piezo. Um, I'm able to do the same surgery endoscopically um, while preserving the corda tympani and giving them the, 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 the hearing uh, from the stepidectomy. In terms of lateral temporal bone resections, um, using the piezo surgery, it actually shortens the, um, the operating time while preserving the vital structures, um, namely the facial nerve, the temporal mandibular joint, and the internal carotid artery. How has piezo surgery changed the way that you perform your surgeries? 
Yeah, so uh, with the piezo, I'm able to now uh, do less uh, less invasive surgery. So uh, traditionally, rather than combined approach microscopic ear surgery, we're now doing a lot more endoscopic ear surgery. The piezo allows me to uh, do the uh, surgery much safer um, with a better better view of a better operative field. Um, in terms of the lateral temporal bone resection, that's where I find it most useful. Um, the, the fine cuts that we make uh, onto the temporal mandibular joint, um, around the facial nerve, and then quite close to the internal carotid artery, these are the vital structures that we can preserve uh, while shortening the operating time. And so that's one of the main uh, advantage of the piezo. Um, in terms of mandibulectomy or maxillectomies, uh, de definitely using the piezo, it, um, it causes less burn to the bone um, while making precise cuts. What benefits does piezo surgery have for your patients? For the patients, it's about uh, preservation of the, the structures. Um, so for the endoscopic ear cases or the endoscopic stapedectomies, it's about preservation of the corda tympana, which is the taste nerve, and then knowing that we can safely uh, remove things while preserving facial nerve as well. In terms of lateral temporal bones, again, it's the main benefit really is about precision of cuts preserving of those vital structures such as facial nerve, internal carotid artery, and also shortening the operating time. Um, lastly, in terms of the mandibulectomies, it's causing less burn to the bone, which then can encourage uh, uh, recovery. How does this compare to what you were using before? The piezo definitely is much, um, uh, it's for an endoscopic ear surgery, the piezo is so much better in turn compared to a drill. With a traditional drill, we often have to drill at a much slower speed, which means slower removal of bone. We often then need to irrigate to clear the bone dust from the operating field before we do further drilling. The piezo allows um, continuous irrigation while removal of the bone, and so that really helps in terms of uh, the operating field, clearing the bone dust, and also um, 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 knowing that I'll be you know, safe in preserving the, the structures. How easy is piezo surgery to use for your nursing and theatre staff? So the piezo is actually very easy to set up. Um, there's only uh, the hand piece, the irrigating tube, and to hook it up to the console. Um, so uh, nursing staff do, do not struggle to set it up and even I could set it up. <laughs> How does Piezo Surgery's learning curve compare with that of other technologies? The Piezo is, it doesn't have a huge um, uh, learning curve. Um, it took me between five to ten cases um, of um, to, to be comfortable using the Piezo. With any technology, there is a learning curve. Um, initially, with Piezo, um, it's about getting that that um, clear field when you're operating underwater. And once you get a handle of that, usually it takes about five to ten cases. It's a very simple technology to master. Each different tips does require different learning. Um, so the MP3, which is the, the curette, um, we use a more like an ice cream scoop to remove the bone. With the MT1, it's it's oscillate, more like an oscillating salt. So again, it just takes yeah, a few cases to learn how to use it, but it's quite easy to use. Did you find it beneficial to have cadaver workshops beforehand to familiarise yourself with the device? Uh, with any new technology, it's always good to trial it on the cadaver um, section. Um, and so, yeah, when, when I first was exposed to the piezo uh, surgery, uh, it was on the cadaver. Do you find piezo surgery in general easy to use? It's quite easy to use. Um, the learning curve is not. Not, 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 not large, it's not huge. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a simple device, easy to use um, and quite trouble free to use. In summary, would you recommend piezo surgery for both patients and surgeons? Yes, I would recommend piezo surgery um, for uh, surgeons and definitely for, for the patients. The reason why for the surgeons, you know, it allows us to be able to perform endoscopic ear surgery, which means minimal access, um, maximal effect, maximal surgery, so the same outcome. So it's all about giving the patient the best outcome uh, with minimal pain, minimal harm.